That's everybody that's here. Okay. Okay, but you can just put them in every place. Yeah. Okay. I really. You got enough for every seat in here, right? Uh huh. Okay. They gotta get presents. <laughs> They're very efficient. Well, that clock says ten o'clock, ten thirty. So I guess it's time to go. <laughs> it was a wonderful lesson. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's the best lesson I've ever taught. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the best lesson. <laughs> hey, Jenny, I have your toothpicks in my car. <laughs> I knew you'd want them back. <laughs> That's right. I didn't realize there were two of them, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, thank you. Hey, who's <laughs> new? Okay, if y'all would listen up and uh, make everybody else aware of, of things going on. Uh, I sent out that email, and uh, and I, I put on it. I usually put a, a little exclamation point to say that it's important, and I try to do different colors to draw your attention to it. So, uh, but if if you will sort of make an effort, please to read your emails. I, I try to send them out. Uh, once a week, but sometimes it's every other week that I send them out. But just just watch for them. Usually on Wednesday or Thursday is when I send them out. Uh, so watch, and that way you'll uh, be real aware of anything that's coming up immediately. Right now, tonight is the one service tonight. It will start at 6 o'clock, and we'll be in the worship service. We'll have some music. We'll have some uh time of inspiration and information and so be sure to uh, attend um, we'll and afterwards we'll go to the fellowship hall and have uh, vegetable soup and cornbread so as a as a community meal and he said well I just don't want to eat in there because it's a bunch of strangers and and I don't feel comfortable sitting at a table there are people I don't know Folks, that's what it's all about. That's why we're having it. So that the body will get to know each other. Because the more we we get together, the more we we have fellowship together, the more we will care for each other, love each other, and and uh, and even minister to each other in times of need. It is so, so important to fellowship together to get to know each other. What, Barbara? I was just going to say yesterday when I went to the ladies' luncheon, I made it a point to anybody that I didn't know their name, whether I was supposed to know it or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I asked them their name was. <laughs> you asked them what their name was? Yeah. That's right. I my name. That is beautiful. That's what the fellowship does, Barbara. And Barbara has always felt ill at ease not knowing people and not knowing names and and so that's exactly right I've told you about the time I was that had to stand up in church and welcome people and turn around and you know how that we welcome people and do that and I said oh it's so good to see you um uh we just welcome you and and then then I said uh are you new here and they said no we've been members for 20 years and I thought so embarrassed but I didn't know them and uh, 
But so you have to get over your embarrassment and, and get to know people and put yourself in positions that you're not just coming to hear a sermon or hear great music or whatever and leave never to participate again. You're coming, we are, we are a fellowship. We are a fellowship and we, uh, and we meet together and it, it's important. So I hope you will come tonight and uh, I hope you will sign up for the uh, mystery dinner, no, no, wait just a minute, not that. Uh, for the Thanksgiving meal, there's going to be a Thanksgiving meal church-wide on the 19th of November. It will be $8 for a big plate and $6 for a small plate. So, That's a Sunday, uh, right? Huh? That's a Sunday. That will be Sunday afternoon, and, and it'll start about, anybody know, about 4.30 in the afternoon, I think. Uh... 4.15 in the afternoon, and you can come and eat and fellowship, then go over to the worship center, and there's going to be a concert. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a, the Sounds of Jericho uh, with deep lyrics and a rich quartet sound. Okay, so they will be uh, ministering, and we'll have that concert afterwards. Another time to fellowship with believers that make you stronger as a Christian as we as we fellowship together. Uh, today is the last day to sign up for the uh, Mystery Dinner Theater. Gobble, gobble, death and trouble. <laughs> so uh, I'm, that's going around, it, and, and I need for you to pay also uh, today. So where is that envelope? Show me. Okay, all right. Keep sending it around because are we do we have two prayer group prayer lists going around? Yes. Okay, because that I only have one of those. So once it gets up here, it needs to go back that way. And then there is a little sheet on the prayer list that says if you are interested, if you are interested, it doesn't say you have to, but if you are interested in being a guide for the children's ministry, say, uh, once every two, three, six months, something like that, uh, just if you're interested, write your name on there. And, uh, and then I will get it to, I'll talk to Amy uh, Rhodes about it, and we'll see how we can uh, work that out and see if that's interested, if you're still interested. It doesn't mean that you're signing up for good. <clears throat> it's just if you're interested, in, instead of coming to Sunday school once every two to three months that you would go down to the children's ministry there in the fellowship hall and be a guide to lead children from one activity to another and that's that's all it would entail so sign up right below that is if you are interested in making making Christmas cards for shut-ins here in our church there are a lot of shut-ins in our church if you're interested, as we would get together as a class, then you can sign up for that, and we'll tell you more about that. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, I think that's, oh, there you see the yellow sheet? That is from Gina, the pastor, about the ministry that, that is going on at their ranch this uh, next week called uh, Born Wild. Was it? Created to be free. Okay, thank you. And so that will give you information about that. Anything else? Yeah. I'm going to just give a quick testimony. I, I got to share this. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I was asked to speak to the, it was a Virginia State University uh, prayer group. Oh. And, and I thought it was just a, a little small group. Mm -hmm. but it, and they said, wait, can you give, just talk about your testimony? And, and um, so this was uh, November 2nd. I, okay. I thought it was supposed to be on the, November 28th. <laughs> Regardless of all that, I I, um, I went ahead and, and called in. This was a on a teleconference, I guess. Okay. And I didn't realize that it was, it wasn't a video teleconference. It was just, I'm just holding my phone, giving a test, talking to, to, to folks. Uh -huh. And I'm not used to, I can't do that at all. I, I, I need to see somebody's face or your, <laughs> I'm saying, right. So, so I'm, I'm doing this, giving my testimony and then talking about what our purpose is and all that. And I'm just going through it. And I feel like I'm just messing everything. I'm talking here and talking. 
At the end of it, I hang up. I, I, they say, well, thank you very much. They said, stand by, we'll get back to you. So the program went off. I, they came back on. I said, I'm sorry, I really must. I wasn't really prepared. Not, what are you talking about? This is one of the greatest. <laughs> they said, this is one of the greatest. That's what we, we've heard. And we got people calling in from all over so, talking about how, they have, how that affected them. And I'm just thinking, I screwed this thing. I, I didn't think I spoke at all well. So <laughs> it's just, just do what God tells you to do, and he will make it work, whatever, whatever right. he's happening. And he'll right. get the glory from it. And he will get the glory. That you is just got to be obedient. Got just, to be obedient. That, thank you. Thank you so much. That is exactly yeah, right. Just, you, you just never know. And if you how, have to do it again, I'm going to do it again. He said, I don't have anything else to say. I said, no, I know you do. <laughs> what? I just want to update you all on Don and Lori Camp. Uh, um, the most recent communication we've had, the doctor says Lori is now 97% clean from her spike back in April. 97%, which is fantastic improvement yes. um they will be home next week from uh probably late tuesday to monday then she has to go back to be she has a doctor appointment every tuesday he doesn't like her missing them uh and they are having a, their estate sale in florida the first and second of december you know they moved across the street to another house well, they are now having an estate sale at the house that they left. Uh, so, uh, and then she does plan to be home for the Christmas holidays. <laughs> okay, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for both of those. And, and thank you, uh, Greg, for the testimony to, to, for all of us to never know, you know, when we have a word from the Lord, give it. Give it to be obedient. I love that. Uh, Tommy, can we have coffee next week? Do you think next I week think is so. next week is coffee well, I'll day? I'll check with our manager. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so coffee next week, and so if anybody will bring a goodie, we would appreciate that, and uh, we'll have some good coffee here for you. So come a little bit early, and we'll fellowship and round some coffee. All right. Uh, Greg, would you open us with prayer this morning? I I, just, I I don't mean to put you on the spot like that, but but what God tells you. Father, uh, we, we gather here this morning uh, in anticipation of hearing your word. We thank you for, for waking us up, for giving us uh, the grace to be able to come here and, and to fellowship with our, with our brothers and sisters. And when we get the word, Father, please give us ears and hearts to, to listen. And to absorb what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, in Jesus' name. The the gift of even being here. <laughs> that is, that is. Of being able to wake up this morning and praising the Lord. All right. Well, uh, you know, in Ephesians 5, that the pastor has been preaching on for what, the last year? <laughs> I think. Uh, where it talks about being alive in Christ. Being alive in Christ and what all that means. And he has given us all sorts of ways of what that means to be alive in Christ. We have talked about uh, here in our Sunday school class that uh, being alive in Christ, to do what? To do what? And we've talked about the last uh, nine weeks, I think, about being connected, being alive alive to in Christ to be connected, to be connected, to gather as a church, to be connected, to uh, share God's message to the world. And so that's what we've been alive to do. But then I ask the question, could being alive in Christ be more than just gathering and sharing? Is there more to it? If you nod yes, you're right. Everybody nod yes. <laughs> uh, you're right. Tonight, Today we're going to start just a quick little uh, unit on being alive and gifted. Now, if you think you are gifted in your own way, uh, that's not what this is going to be about. You'll, you'll hold on and we'll be talking about what it means to be alive and gifted. And so this is going to be a short series about the Christian life, about the Christian life. Now, 
Halloween is past, and oh, let me just tell you this, and Becky's not here. She had planned to be here. Last Sunday when she was here, I don't know if you realize, she got up at 3.30 in the morning to get to Sunday school. She got up at 3.30, left her house, uh, her little apartment, uh, walked up to Moreland Avenue, walked up, which is from her place, was about three-fourths of a mile up there, caught a bus to get to the MARTA station, drove to the uh, road MARTA to Five Points, changed uh, lines, rode MARTA down as far as she could, got another bus in order to come down to Clayton County, got off the bus at the wrong stop, and she was just standing on the side of the road. Somebody from my church saw her. She doesn't know who it was, but somebody saw her and picked her up and brought her to church, and she was actually here about 8.30 in the morning. Uh, when she came in, I don't know if you remember, she all she could say is, I'm home, I'm home. It was, it was a great thing, but we got a call Halloween night. We got a call Halloween night and said, Mimi, I've had another fall. And, uh, and she sounded, and she said, I'm just so weak, I'm so weak, and I'm so hungry. And I said, where are you? She was in her, uh, well, Tommy and I picked up, well, we uh, went over to Vermeil and, and Michael, and the four of us uh, went to Becky's place with first aid, uh, equipment and food we stopped and got food for and everything and went over there fixed her food and her eye was actually swollen shut it was just everything was just huge she had been cut uh, had bled quite a bit she wouldn't stop to let anybody at the Marta station help her because she was afraid she'd miss a bus and uh, so she got on the bus and People were giving her Kleenex and all to stop the bleeding and everything. So uh, we got her situated and, and everything. She didn't go to work the next day. Would you believe the next day she went to work on Thursday? She went to work with a swollen eye. The people at work told her she shouldn't have been there, but she did did all of that. So uh, so I'm surprised that she's not here today because I've been talking to her every afternoon when she gets home from work to make sure she has a, uh, uh, she gets home okay. So uh, we're still trying to get her moved down to this area. So be in, in sincere prayer for Becky because uh, <coughs> she just needs uh, needs a lot of help and, and in a lot of different ways. But she is determined. And I just n have never seen a person love church and love a Sunday school class. You, she considers you, every one of you, she considers you her family. She doesn't, we try to get in touch with her niece, but her niece won't call us back. And, uh, and Tommy has texted her, them, she called them. Uh, they're just sort of tired of her. And, uh, and so she considers each one of you her family. And, uh, and so I just want you to be in prayer for her, uh, knowing how much she loves every one of you and considers you her brothers and sisters. So that's that's part of um, being part of the family. That's part of being the family, the family that God has put together. And and I just want you to know how important how important whether you have spoken to her or ministered to her or given to her, or whatever, how much she internalizes this and how much she appreciates it. So with that said, as I was looking here at my notes, with Halloween passed, that's what Tommy and I did on Halloween. <laughs> that's what we did on Halloween, what? Last Sunday she was all bruised and Oh, that was from another fall. Yeah, that she had fallen. That was the, the from the first fall in the Marta Station. And and that's and the Marta police came and helped her and and but she missed her bus and she was almost four hours getting home that day so she didn't want to miss her bus again so um, so anyway uh, 
how many of us would have gone to such an effort, to such an effort to be a part of the family of God, to be, to meet together and to fellowship together. So Halloween is past, Thanksgiving is coming up, and, uh, and, but even with Thanksgiving coming up, have you noticed all the stores? They're all decorated for Christmas. Yeah. Even Chick-fil-A is. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Oh. Christmas dinner, uh, where was Christmas that thing went yesterday? I know, I know, I know it. So everybody at Christmas, you know, is, is upon us and all that. That thinking about Christmas, I'm not just ready to think about it, but um, but but we are, and but Christmas brings thoughts of gifts. Uh, most people like to receive gifts, but let me ask you this: Who likes to give gifts? Now wait just a minute. You like to give gifts, and you like to spend time thinking about the perfect gift for each individual that you're going to give to. You like to think about that. Anybody in here like that? Steve does, and Terry does, I know. Uh, okay, but not very many of us. You know, Gary Chapman in his five love languages says giving gifts and receiving gifts is, is a love language, is a love language. That you are thinking so much about that other person, not of yourself, but of that other person. But you also like to receive a gift, not so much, it doesn't have to be a big fancy gift, it can be a card that was picked out special for you. It can be, you know, just something little that was, was just special for you. So actually giving and receiving gifts is a love language. Well, guess what? I have made a handout that shows a present, a gift. And so, as we think about gifts, this is what I want you to do. In box number one, in box number one, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to, uh, and this is what I want you to do. You know, of course, that God has given us many gifts, has given us many gifts. Now this, I just don't want you to think about gifts. I want you to think about and write down in about 30 seconds all the gifts that you can think of that God has given us. Okay? Ready, set, go. Huh? Write it. Yeah, write it. Write it. Write it. What? What were we supposed to be writing? Gifts that God has given you. Oh. You you've got about ten seconds left. You better hurry. <laughs> I know there are many more. I know that many more. I assume that every one of you have a Jesus. Is that right? <laughs> Did you have Jesus? <laughs> I assume that most of you have salvation on, on your list. Okay, good. Uh, some of you may have God, but some of you may have something related to peace with God. Do and of course, that's part of salvation. I know that you probably wrote down love. Maybe you wrote down forgiveness. I <laughs> see uh, mercy, grace, uh, salvation, and that. Okay. Uh, did anyone write down any of the spiritual gifts that God has given you, like is named in? in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Anybody write down Patience. your spiritual Patience. gift? Patience. Patience. 
Anybody write down spiritual gift? To encourage, yes, and that is a spiritual gift. Encouragement is a spiritual gift as listed in the Bible. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, well, listen. Uh, uh, did anyone write down the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand if you wrote down the Holy Spirit. All right. Well, guess what? We are all going to be talking about the gift that God has given us, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So in your second box, I want you to write down Holy Spirit. Because for the next three weeks, we are not going to be talking about really individual spiritual gifts. We're really going to be talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so this side of the room, would you look up the whole, all of you on this side of the room, look up um, John 16, 7 through 15. John 16, 7 through 15. And the other side of the room, on this side of the room, I want you to write, uh, look up Romans 8, 26 through 27. Now, these are not the only places that it talks about the Holy Spirit, of course, but it does talk about, it uh, gives you a little overview about why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us. Why do we even have the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do for us? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, this side of the room in, uh, in John 16, what, what are some things that the Holy Spirit uh, does for you? He leads us. He leads us. Okay, the other side of the room, what's something? Intercedes. What? Intercedes for, us. Intercedes for us. Back to the first side. Convicts us. What? Convicts. Convicts us. Back to this side. Searches our hearts. Searches our hearts. Uh, back to this side. Empowers us. Back to that side. Helps in weakness. Helps in weakness. Back to this side. I didn't hear what? Advocates. Advocates. The other side. Anybody else? Counselor. A counselor. What does that mean? Someone that you can talk with that will give you advice, but listen to you and respond to what you're telling me. Wow, isn't that wonderful, the way you said that? <laughs> that is right. That is right. Uh, anybody else? He prays for us. He prays? Even prays? Well, we don't know how to pray. That's what it says, that he prays for us. We, don't, we are in such throes that we can't even pray for ourselves. He prays for us. <clears throat> he also guides us to the truth. Guides to the truth. Yes. He, he, the Holy Spirit has guaranteed, write the word guarantee. He guarantees our salvation. He literally guarantees our salvation. He, the Holy Spirit uh, fills us, and we'll talk about that later, uh, gifts us. Did, did nobody said gifts. Where did all those gifts come from like, uh, that we, you know, talk about in 1 Corinthians uh, 12? They came from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gifts us. He, uh, oh, the Holy Spirit, goodness, I just... Keep going. Now he gives us. He unites us. And that 
that's what we're pretty much going to talk about today. Uh, the Holy Spirit, um, in fact, oh, in fact, he sends us. He sends us. You know, when Paul was going on, uh, was in Antioch and uh, at the church in Antioch, and they were uh, praying, the Holy Spirit literally sent Paul and Barnabas out on that first mission trip. Uh, uh, told uh, told the church and and so to send them out. So the Holy Spirit. In fact, we recognize. Listen, we recognize we cannot live the Christian life successfully, successfully without the power and the filling of the Holy Spirit. The gift we'll talk about today is in fact the Holy Spirit. So right <laughs> on your ribbon. Holy Spirit. And you can write it down. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So let's talk about this Holy Spirit. But let's start at the beginning. And with our mind's eye, you know, no, I like for you to turn the television on in your eye, <laughs> in your mind. With that mind's eye, I want you to think about Paul as he's writing to writing a letter that we call the first, uh, first Corinthians. He was writing this letter to the church in Corinth. So what do you know about the church in Corinth? What do you know about the Corinthians? That's a question. <laughs> what do you know about them? They didn't have order in the church. They didn't have order in the church. It was a cosmopolitan area. It was a very cosmopolitan yeah. area, yes. Anything else? It was a lot of divisions and problems in that church. Where, where, where was the Corinth church? I know it's in Corinth, but where is Corinth? <coughs> it's in Greece. Where you know Greece is sort of like a. Uh, so where in Greece? It's down at the bottom. <laughs> Macedonia is at the top of Greece, and that's where Thessalonica and Berea and Philippi, you know those letters from the uh, church? They were up in Macedonia. Then you go all the way down in Athens, and then you go to this part that hangs off the end of Greece, and that is uh, Archaea, where, uh, where Corinth was. Very important city, large city, metropolitan city. Uh, wild city <clears throat> a lot of idol worship all of that in Corinthians Paul spent about 18 months in Corinth forming this church starting this church and he was, and uh, and this was on his second missionary journey and uh, the church was mostly Gentiles you know that in some of the other churches that were part Jews and part Gentile this was mostly Gentiles down in in this so what I want you to do right now is I want you to turn to Romans, the first chapter in Romans. Now you say, why do I turn to Romans if we're going to talk about Corinth then we're going to talk about the Corinthian church? We're going to start with Romans 1, 18. And the reason I want you to turn to Romans is Paul was actually in Corinth while he was writing to the Romans. Now get this. He was in Corinth, writing to the Romans. But so he was, just imagine in your mind, here's Paul sitting at his desk. There was no closed windows or air conditioning. And so he's sitting by a window. He's at his desk. He's looking out on the city of Corinth as he's writing to the Romans. But he's, what he's writing as he looks out, if you'll look at uh, verse 18, and then he starts writing, he says, The wrath of God is being revealed to you from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of people who surpass the truth by their, by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God, because they were a very philosophical city, maybe uh, Corinth was, about God is plain for them 
because God has made it plain to them. He's been preaching, and he says, you know about, these Corinthians know about this. It's been plain to them, but they're not paying attention. They are looking at that idol. And he goes on to say, they're going to be without excuse. And then he goes on in verse uh, 21, and he says, uh, God, you know, they, they have glorified God, are given thanks to him. They have foolish hearts, were darkened. Although they claim to be wise, oh, they were prideful, and they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images, as, uh, as we said, there was a lot of idols in the town, as it were in all Greek towns for that matter. They exchanged the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles or in our day money and 401ks and homes and and uh hobbies and boats and all of those kinds of things 24 then god gave them over to their sinful desires oh they began to think they began to think Ooh. and he's watching this happening out his window and then they worship uh, and serve created things. He watched as they were having uh, immoral sex in the temples as part of the sexual, as part of the temple worship. Uh, not only was it uh, men and women having sex, but he goes on to say, and gave them over in verse 26 to their shameful lust. And it talks about unnatural ones, women with women and men with men. Hi, he's looking out his window and seeing all of this going on in Corinth. Furthermore, in verse 28, just as he did not think it worth, uh, they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to depraved minds, to depraved minds. And every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, they were full. Now listen, this is just not sex we're talking about. They were full of envy. Mm. They were full of murder. Can you pick up the paper or look at, uh, you know, uh, look at TV without a murder? They were full of strife. Is there strife in families today? They were full of deceit lying, full of malice, meanness. They are gossipers. Ooh. Okay, you know, God, I'm, I'm okay with the sex part about men and women and all of that kind of thing, but, but you're stepping on some toes down here. You're stepping on some toes. They're full of slanderers. Mm. They're full of God-haters. They're full of insolence arrogant arrogant and boastful do you know anybody prideful people they invent ways of doing weevil they disobey <laughs> we if, if not enough <laughs> they disobey their parents <laughs> they disobey our parents I don't know about you. Has anybody in here ever disobeyed a parent? <laughs> don't, don't show me. <laughs> don't show me. <laughs> okay. They have no understanding. They have no fidelity, no loyalty. Mm. Mm -hmm. They have no love. They have no love. You know people like that. They have no mercy. They, I pull myself up by the bootstraps. They can do the same thing. Look at those homeless people. Who cares? You know, all they know, uh, although they know, and here and here, they know God's righteous decree because Paul had already been preaching, preaching in, in homes, preaching on the side of the street, preaching wherever he went throughout the city of Corinth. He had been preaching about God's righteousness, uh, but uh, they do such things and they really deserve death. Uh, they continue to do these things, and other people may not do these things, but they approve of those who do it. I think Paul is pretty much stepping not only on the Corinthians as he's looking out the window, seeing all of this, 
He's stepping on our toes too. He may be stepping on our toes too when he gets down to some of this other. So now, flip over to 1 Corinthians 1. Flip over to 1 Corinthians 1. Because now Paul finished writing to Romans, sent it on, finished up his second missionary journey, wound up back in Ephesus, which is on the, the sea near, uh, uh, on the coast of Turkey, uh, wound up in Ephesus, where he has been there for about three years, preaching in Ephesus and uh, working in the churches there in Ephesus. And, uh, and so he's sitting, sitting there or preaching, and he receives reports back to him from Corinth about trouble in paradise. <laughs> that is trouble in Corinth. That's major trouble of Corinth. He, he, that not only what he saw from his desk in, in Corinth, but has invaded the church that he loved so dearly, that he started, that he had such, uh, that he had such hopes for, that he started. And it has invaded the very, in the very way that he was warning about. It was invaded with sexual immorality. It was invaded with jealousies. It was invaded with divisions. Look in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 10. And uh, as he is talking, he says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these were Christians. That all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, uh, some from Chloe's household had informed me that there have been quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Apollos, who was uh, a very uh, silver-tongued preacher at that time, and he preached Christ. And, uh, and he was an evangelist that went around, and he was a great uh, speaker. Uh, but uh, another said, I follow Cephas. Who was Cephas, remember? That was Peter. Because uh, Peter was the first person to start the church there in Jerusalem. I follow Peter. Okay. Still another says, I follow Christ, very proudfully. <laughs> I follow Christ. And then he goes on to talk about his Christ divided. His heart is so disappointing. Uh, what's the difference in this church and the way Paul and the way Scott sometimes uh, describes our church as we are a bunch of messed up people? <laughs> we are a bunch of sinners. Uh, what's the difference? And I, from looking at this in our church, um, like people are choosing it, like Apollos was an eloquent speaker, Apollos. In our church, whoever speaks, we accept because the vision is the same. Because, because, the vision, because what's the same? The vision, is the, the, vision same. Is the, same. the vision is the same. The vision is the same. And like in this church, the people were choosing either path, you know, one people were this path, and one people were this path, uh -huh. and it was all out of order. Yes, it and was. Paul all. said we should be united in Christ. We not, should be you know, united in Christ, not behind a man. Mm -hmm but united in Christ. And you know, all churches have messed up people in it. But but one of the things our church does that I think is so wonderful is that we have help. We have help for messed up people. Whether it's seekers who come into our church and we have a discovery class. Whether it's people who have addiction problems of any kind. And we have a one way. Uh, in fact, we went to a uh, a young man, the young man that we went to, and Bobby kept telling him the man about uh, our one-way program, uh, and I couldn't figure out, you know, he had said he had had problems when he was young, but he seemed to just have everything together. Well, he showed up at one way, Bobby. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah, Ricky catch me on that. Uh huh. He he did. He showed up at the one way, and so sometimes just to make sure that you are staying on the right track 
We have all sorts of other things to envelop the community wherever they are. Of what? And I think like cosmopolitan they are like um, they had different cultures. Uh -huh. not clash, but in our church the difference is the different cultures that we have are united, like say united in Christ, because the different cultures they had it called division. And Paul had to tell her to bring it together, like speaking in tongues and what people should wear. But I look at our church, we don't, it's not significant to pity issues. We just kind of like say, the body of Christ is united that way. Yes, That's united that way. And, uh, and, and even the class that y'all teach on Wednesday night to help people grow in Christ and understand what it is they have committed to and what a difference it makes in their lives. We have the, the, uh, the house for, uh, uh, women coming out of addiction, the uh, house for men coming out of addiction. We have all of that. What, Joe? So, when, when I read this section, right, in First Corinthians, I layer in the, the historical view of what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So when Paul is writing the church in Corinth, the term church is equal to all Christians in Corinth. Not a group in a building in a meeting. It's not a single organization. It's all Christians in form. That's the church. So when you read, it says, each one of you is saying, I am of Paul, I am of Paul, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. In a corollary today would be if Paul was writing to us in his own time. He would say, some of you say, I am of First Baptist. Some, I am of the Methodist Church. I am of the Seventh Adventists. I am Christ. Okay? That's what I think he is trying to say is all of you are developing these denominations in the church in form. But what you really need to do is what he talks about. You need to come together and all be of Christ. Right? In unity. And, it's, and for me, it's the power of that passage is one of the things that my soapbox is about is the fact, can't all us Christians' denominations get along? Because we're all supposed to be about Christ, not about the Baptist way or the Methodist way or the Catholic way, right? And so, to me, we can, we can use this as an allegory or analogous to our small little church, but I think Paul is about trying to driving across all types of Christians. I understand that. But as we apply the Bible, we apply where we are. And that's, this is where we are. So we do have to, to look at, at why, where we are. And uh, his main message is to, uh, is to talk about being unified in Christ. What? And that's well, what even our church needs to be. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Even in our church, there is division, there is controversy. We, we go to change something and, and people don't like it and they tell us about it. All of these things apply to us today in, in the sense that there are divisions among, I, I don't like this kind of music, so I... Uh, I uh, uh huh. It, it applies. Or this kind of pew or seat, or this kind, of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or this kind of timing. Why? Did, why would you know that kind of thing? I mean, there are certainly divisions in Christians, uh, choir robes. Certainly divisions in the in the greater Christian community. But let's narrow it down just to our community. So back to the basics. Okay, jump to uh, jump to chapter twelve. Jump to chapter 12, and we are sort of running out of time here. But but what I want you to see here, we're not going to concentrate on specific gifts. Look at what Paul says in verses 1 and 3. Now about the gifts of the Spirit. Now he's talking about how different people are gifted to do different things in the church. And that's true. But he says, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God, if you are a Christian, you're not going to say, Jesus be cursed. You're not going to say that if you are a Christian. 
but, and no one can say Jesus is Lord unless they are a Christian, unless the Holy Spirit lets them understand that Jesus is Lord. Now, it doesn't mean that perhaps they are following Jesus, but they know and God has given them that information through the Holy Spirit. And then he goes, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> and so, you know, I was going to say, there are different uh, arguments about spiritual gifts. Who has them? Who doesn't have them? Are we using them more important? How to get them on and on. But Paul is saying, look at the big picture. Look at the big picture. Uh, there are disagreements with Christians today, even in our church, as as uh, Alan was saying. Uh, there, you know, the music. What Sunday school lessons? You know, doing these Sunday school lessons as a as a whole group. Oh, there were some teachers that really complained about it because they wanted to go with their study, and their study was in numbers. <laughs> but but anyway, uh, so. Uh, so they, they had a real hard time being part of the church and agreeing. The placement of children, the children going over into the fellowship hall. There were people that had a major disagreement about that. But look in box three. What unites? What unites us? And I'm just going to go fast and listen carefully at what unites us. In 4 through 6 and in 12, it says there are different kinds of gifts. We know that. But who? We have the same what? Spirit. The same. We all have the same spirit. And that same spirit distributes them. Uh, it's the... It's, uh, Paul is wanting to emphasize the four bonds, the four wonderful bonds that we have as Christians and how important they are. Uh, it goes down in verse 12 and he says, Just as a body, the one uh, uh, has many parts, but all, it, uh, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. So we all have the same spirit. When you were baptized, the uh, uh, when, not when you were baptized, when you accepted the Lord, uh, uh, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came into you at that time. You didn't have to seek it. You didn't have to pray for it. When you accepted the Lord Jesus, as your Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit came into you at that time. Now, uh, and, and it was a one-time deal. It was a one-time deal. Now, it doesn't mean that it, like in Ephesians 5, 18, it talks about being filled with the Spirit. That's entirely different. That's entirely different. Uh, you, the, the Holy Spirit came into you when you became a Christian. However, we are constantly bombarded with temptations, temptations, temptations. And so we are asking the Holy Spirit to fill us each day to combat those temptations of what not to do and what to do that the Lord wants us to do and we are hesitant to do. <laughs> we are hesitant to do. As, as Greg was saying, sometimes the Lord sort of speaks to us and we say, I just don't want to do that right now. <laughs> Maybe lay the Lord. Maybe lay the Lord. But I just don't want to. You know, the, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I, one of the things I think that every morning when you get up, or even before you get up, to ask, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit today so will I know your will for me as I go through this whole day. That might be a help. All right. So moving on in that verse, uh, there are different kinds of service, which means ministries, different kinds of ministries, but it's the same what? Same what? Same, no, it's, it's, it's the same Lord. It's the same Lord. Uh, 
that uh, all the ministries, but the same Lord shows you which ones to do and uh, and how to do them. It's the same Lord. Go ahead and look then. And then it says there are uh, in verse uh, is that verse six. Uh, there are different kinds of workings, which means uh, which means operations or uh, and uh, and it says there are different kinds of working, but in all of them, in everyone, it's the same God at work. So we have we have the same Spirit, the same Lord, the same God, <coughs> the same God. Uh, God is completely involved in all the gifts, in the giving, in the service, in the places, in the activities, all for his glory. Notice the Trinity here, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, they are three in one. And then in verse 12, which I've already read, we have the same body, which is the church body of believers the body of believers you know so and and uh let me ask y'all something before you go I did that. you did that thank you <laughs> okay uh right in this last one my gift right in that last one my gift Every one of you has a gift that was given to you by the Holy Spirit. Now, you may know your gift. There are something like 19 gifts that are, that are written, but that's not all inclusive. Some gifts of prophecy, serving, uh, leadership, giving, faith, encouragement, teaching, mercy, wisdom, knowledge, healing, miracles, discernment, tongues, interpreting tongues, uh, evangelists, pastors, all of those are some of the gifts, but that's not an all-inclusive list. Uh, do you have the gift of mercy? Do you truly have compassion for other people? Do you have the gift of wisdom that is, you really seek God's wisdom and you look out for the, the wise? Do you have the gift of encouragement? Do you have the gift of generosity? that you want to give to other people? Do you have an unusual amount of faith? Do you have the gift of hospitality that you love to serve others, the gift to serve, all of those? And if you don't know what is specifically the gift that God is, uh, the Holy Spirit gives you, ask him, ask him. But whatever that gift is, it's to be used to bring God glory it's not for up to bring you glory. It's to use to bring God glory. It's used for uniting and growing the body. And it's to be used in the church in serving others. Everybody has at least one. The more you give yourself to the one that God has given you, he gives you more. He gives you more. Would you bow your heads? As you put down, as we put down the gift that God has given us, or the gifts that God has given us, the next question comes, dear Lord, am I using it? Am I using it for you and for the body? Heavenly Father, help us to, to know and that gift, to analyze that gift, and to make sure that we are using it, using it in the body for your glory, Heavenly Father, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Perseverance. That's, yeah, yes. But you, but it has to be perseverance in the church. It's not just your own perseverance. It's perseverance and loyalty to the church, to the body. That's where people sort of get mixed up uh, as to their gifts.
because it, it is the gift that God gives you for the body of Christ. For the body of Christ. Okay, did everybody... Hey, 